Now, the physical heart, which is centered slightly to the left of the human being, and it's interesting also that the Arabic language itself is a, a movement from left to right. Some of the, uh, the people of Ishara indicated that, 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 that writing is, should be towards the heart. In other words, the whole purpose of writing is to affect the heart. This is also the reason why the tawaf, or the circumambulation around the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is done with the left side facing the house. Some of the scholars have said because that the heart inclines towards the left and so the purpose is that the heart is inclining towards the Kaaba. Now the actual physical heart which is beating in our breast beats at about a hundred thousand times a day. It's pumping two gallons of blood per minute and over a hundred gallons per hour. If you actually took a hundred gallons of water and moved them physically with your body from one place to another by the end of it, you'd be quite exhausted. And yet this human heart is pumping two gallons of blood per minute, over 100 gallons per hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, for an entire lifetime. The vascular system that it's sending this life-giving blood is over 60,000 miles long. In other words, more than two times the circumference of the earth. So the, the blood is actually being forced through the body over 60,000 miles of vascular, uh, of vascular system in the human body. Now one of the interesting things also about the heart is that we know that it starts it actually starts beating before the brain is formed. In other words, the heart itself begins to beat without any central nervous system. Now, the dominant theory is that the central nervous system is what's controlling the entire human being uh, from the brain. And yet we know now that the nervous system does not initiate the beat of the heart, that it, it's actually self-initiated. And we also know, or we would say initiated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also we know now that the entire heart, all of the, the connections to the brain can be severed in a heart transplant and another heart can be put into a human being's body and the, and the heart continues to beat without any connection to the brain whatsoever because we cannot regenerate nerve cells. So the fact that the heart itself is the, not only the center of the human being, but it is not... Uh, beating because of the brain, uh, because of the central nervous system. Now, another interesting thing about uh, the brain, there are many actually people that think that the, the brain uh, is also the center of consciousness. And yet, the Quran very clearly states, لَهُمْ قُلُومٍ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts that they don't, they're not able to think with, or they're not able to understand with. And so the, the understanding from that, according to the Muslims, is that the center of the intellect, the center of human consciousness, is the heart and not the brain itself. And it's only recently that human beings have realized that there's, there are over 40,000 neurons in the heart. In other words, there are actually uh, cells in the heart that are communicating there's actual, now there's understood to be a two-way communication between the brain and the heart. In other words, the brain sends the heart messages, but the heart is also sending the brain message. And these things are only recently being discovered. There was a study done by two physiologists in the 70s, John and Beatrice Lacey, that found that the brain actually sent messages to the heart, but the heart did not automatically obey the messages. Sometimes it speeded up, and other times it slowed down indicating that the heart itself has its own type of intelligence. Now, the brain gets signals from the heart that reach the amygdala, the thalamus, and the cortex, which relates to emotions. Uh, the, the cortex, the neocortex, relates to learning and reasoning. And these are only recently discovered, and we don't fully understand them. But what we do know is that the heart is an extremely sophisticated organ, and it's also, according to the hadith, it's a source of knowledge. 
the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that wrong action is what irritates the heart and you do not desire other people to see it. So the heart actually knows wrong action and this is one of the reasons why people can do terrible things but ultimately they're affected. If you look for instance in Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment what uh, the, the brilliant Russian author was indicating in that story was that the crime itself is the punishment because human beings have to live with the results of their actions and that the soul when somebody does a crime when somebody does something that is against the heart is against the soul then that actually affects the human being to the degree that they will go into a state of spiritual agitation and they will use many many ways to cover this up this is what kufr is it's a covering up they will use alcohol they will use drugs they will use sexual experiment they will use all uh, seeking power seeking wealth seeking fame all of these ways to try to to basically to go into a state of heedlessness into a state of submersion into the world that makes us forget our essential nature that makes us forget our hearts and so people become very cut off from their hearts